Hi everyone, my name is Elisa Tilsner. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Australia. Today we are going to be doing some blends colouring. I haven't coloured for such a long time and I got stuck into colouring the apple from the Apple Harvest set and I had a couple of goes and I found um, one design that I really liked. So I am going to show you how I have coloured the apple, the single apple from the Apple Harvest. Um, I am going to go in real time so that you can follow along with me and hope that you enjoy it. So the first thing that we're going to do is stamp in memento because we are using um, alcohol uh, markers. We want to use a water-based image. So uh, this is quite a sketchy looking, um, as in not sketchy as in dodgy, but as sketchy as in the way it's been drawn. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually stamp it off twice before I stamp it onto my cardstock. So I'm just using plain basic white card and just going to stamp it down in the corner. We're not going to make the full card. We're just going to be coloring in today. So I've got a reasonably light image to start with. So the colors that I'm using for the apple, and there are quite a few of them, I'll be using petal pink, light and dark combination, a light Calypso coral, the dark and light of the real red, and also the light of the cherry cobbler. Okay, now what I'll often do before I start is, I'm just gonna stand up and bring these up to show you. I will often pull out all of my reds, my red shades and my pink shades. So I started off with the Cherry Cobbler Light and Dark. Then I think I did uh, Poppy Parade, the Real Red, the Petal Pink and the Calypso Coral. And I did forget that I have a Sweet Sorbet that I could have thrown in there as well. So I just usually get um, Light and Dark, Light and Dark, Light and Dark, just to see what they look like. And then I will come in and I will actually do a blend of what I think will be nice. So I decided I'd go for the real red, not the poppy parade. And then I wanted to pick a color that was a little bit darker. So I could see that my, my pinks would blend into my coral, uh, my Calypso coral, which would then the next tone up because the dark Calypso coral is a completely different color. So I tried to keep it all in the same color tonings. So I picked the real red and then I picked, um, I could have gone for either the dark cherry cobbler or the light cherry cobbler, which is what I've chosen for this one. And then I also did the same for my greens when we get to our leaf. So I had um, the, oh, actually I can't remember what colors I had now. I think I pulled out my old olive and also the mossy meadow to see. And you can see this, I think this one was the light mossy meadow, which is a really completely different color to the greens as well. So I ended up going for um, a couple of the shades of uh, the Mossy Meadows actually. It was on the weekend, I can't remember closely, but I always do a color swatch and see whether, and then I should blend them together just to see what my blend, my ombre blend will look like. Make sure all my tonings will match. So that's just a little bit of an idea of what I do. So I'm going to zoom in and then I'm going to sit down and make sure that I am in screen, get myself all placed. So I will, I will try and zoom in and go slowly for you so that if you are following along, um, you can color along with me. Now, the other thing that I also have is um, a black and white pencil and these are from our watercolor pencil packs. And I also have um, a white gel pen as well and we'll move to the other I'll tell you what the other colors are when we get there so I started off with my and I'll be using my bullet tip for these ones so I started off with my uh, petal pink and I just laid some color down where the shine will be on my apple now when I said this was a bit of a sketchy um, <laughs> a sketchy design meaning that where my shine is is where the sketchy detail has actually been put in so which is why i wanted it quite light because i actually want to color over the top of that that's where my highlights are going to be and i'm just going to go quite broad with that to start with so and i'm not going right to the edge of the line it doesn't matter if you do because you're going to go over the top of it anyway so, and a little bit around the top. 
Okay, I'm going to leave my caps just sitting on and I usually try and keep them in the order because I, I those real red and calyp, uh, cherry cobbler lids all look very similar. Okay, so I'll get them all in a row, which you probably can't see off camera anyway, um, because now I'm going to come in with my dark. I'm just going to get myself set up. Okay, where's my dark one? My light cherry cobbler, which is my darkest red that I'll be using, my darkest red tone. So I am going to just pop down some color in the middle and I probably will flip my um, apple around several times. So it won't always stay in this position. Now you can use the brush tip for this area if you want. Mine unfortunately is very frayed, so it doesn't lay down my color very nicely. But I'm just gonna pop that in the middle. And I'm actually not gonna worry so much that I've got stripes because an apple has texture, right? And then I'm just going to come around the edge of that leaf because there would be a little bit of shadow there. Okay, next I'm going to go for my dark real red. And what I'm going to do for this one is do my outline, quite a thin outline if you can, even if you are right on that line. So you can do it sketchy or you can try and do it smooth if you wish. So this is where I'm gonna to need to start coming around. So I'll just have to keep checking to make sure I'm in the screen. Okay, so I've done an outline of my apple. And now what I'm going to do is where that edge is, I'm just going to color over the top of that. So I'm gonna go over my, over my cherry cobbler a little bit and extend it out. Now I wanna start curving this because our apple is curved. I'm just gonna do a little line across there. Okay. And then I'm just going to bring this line here a little bit thicker. I'll leave the other side thin, but I just want this side just a tad thicker. Okay. And you can go over that a little bit more just to blend them together. Right. Red, real red light. So I'm just going to go over that side just a little bit to smooth it out. Um, I want this edge quite thin, but I can extend this dark out a little bit again. I just want to try and start getting a bit of smoothness happening in there. And then I'll flip around and I'll just extend that out as well. So get that smoothness happening. Bring that in just a little bit. And then blend it all together. Doesn't matter so much at the moment because we are going to do two layers. Okay, then I'm gonna do my light Calypso Coral and I'm not gonna to touch the outside edge. I'm just gonna start bringing in this side just to make that a little bit thinner. Okay, so very smooth on that side. Flip your thing around. I can go in a tiny bit on this side, not too much, but I can bring that in a little bit more on that side. Okay, and then just blend that into the reds. Okay, and then I've got two more colors. So all dark petal pink, just to soften that edge. And Again, I find it easier to flip it because you got that natural curve then. So we'll bring that one in. And then finally with the light petal pink again, and I'm just gonna blend any of the Calypso Coral in. So that looks still pretty harsh and ugly, right? So don't fret. 
So now we're going to come in a second time. So I've gone back to my cherry cobbler and like I said, I don't really mind if I've got stripes because an apple has texture. It's not completely smooth. So I'm just going to throw in some stripes so I don't mind if I'm heavier on the bottom. We've got our stripes going on. Make sure I'm still in the screen. Okay, and then we're just going to work our way again. So because I sort of find that the first layer sort of lays down the colour and the second layer helps it all soak in while your card is nice and wet as well. Now this side is a little bit too, the shine is a little bit too wide for me. So I'm actually going to bring, start to close that in a little bit. So that's the real red dark. Now I'm going to do the real red light. And again, I just want to make this a little bit thinner over this side as well. And you can see I'm not blending as in blending, blending. I'm just doing my stripes to get that texture in my apple. Okay, and then we're gonna move through with Calypso Coral. And that'll probably be it. Okay, and you can even bring the Calypso Coral stripes in because what happens when you use lighter blends on top of darker colors, it actually, sort of pushes the color like I could I could color in here with my lighter colors and it would actually push those darker colors back so I'm just going to give some more stripes because it might separate those colors out a little bit okay so I think I'm pretty happy with that at the moment I've just got to come back and do there's a, just a little area behind the stalk here that so will pop a little bit of color just using the calypso in there but we'll come in with our highlighter in a little bit so there's my apple to start with so now we're going to move on to our leaves and our stalk okay and then we'll come back and add all our highlighting and I'm getting off camera so we'll come back in here okay so for my leaves I am using old olive old olive dark and old olive light and I am using the Light Mossy Meadow. Actually, I think I'm going to change that. I'm going to bring in Dark Mossy Meadow, which is going to be quite dark. And I'm also using Daffodil Delight. And then for my stalk, I'm using the Ivory and the Bronze. I have discovered I had a heap of blends missing, so I have rectified that and have ordered all of the skin tones and um, all the new colours that I haven't ordered yet. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top of my leaf here and I'm just going to pop down some dark mossy meadow and I'm also going to come to the tip and just come up. Okay, and I'll do that for this leaf as well. I'm, I'm not a realistic colouring artist. I haven't got that far yet, but um, I think this one looked pretty good. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a curl on this side of the leaf. So I've just gone with that with a dark color. And then we're gonna come in with our dark old olive. Showing the skin. And we're gonna lay some of that color down. I'm gonna go over the top of my first colour down just so that that blends in and the same with this one up here okay and working our way down in colours so now I will do the light old olive Don't be too fussed if you can't get that blend happening straight away because when we do our second round, 
they will all come together nicely. And then I'm just going to fill in the gaps with the light daffodil delight. Okay, and we're going to go over a second time. Just to make sure that those colors are really saturated in. And our blends will See, you can see even now that, that when I put the second layer on, the blend happens a lot nicer and a lot quicker. need to go back and forward between your light old olive and your yellow you can do that as well so I'm going to leave it like that now our stalk there's actually a little portion of the leaf that will become the this little part here that connects the stalk to the leaf part of it is actually green part of it is brown so with my dark mossy meadow I'm just going really really gently along the bottom area and then I will just come in with my I'll try my light actually and put that in and then we can go over the top with our next set so I'm going to do the ivory you can use whatever browns you like I'm going to bring that into the green a little bit. This one, I didn't leave enough space, so you can actually go over the top of it and it will start to turn a little bit brown. And then with my bronze, I'm just gonna go along the edge and then underneath a little bit. Okay, even the small areas I like to do twice. Okay, how's our apple looking? Put all my caps on. I'm pretty happy with that so far. Okay, next, next, next. I think we will do a little bit of our highlighting. So I've got my black, my white, and my little highlighter pen. So with my white, I can just come over with my pencil and just draw in a little bit over those highlight areas you can give it a little bit of a draw over my yellow area just softens it ever so slightly okay and then with my black i can just go around that little area there where the stalk is, I can bring a little bit, Not, I don't want a huge amount, and you can always rub it with your finger as well. Just gonna bring a little bit of shading underneath that leaf for a little bit of shadow, very gently. Just rub it in with your finger to soften it because we just want, a, we want we don't want a harsh line. We don't want any like pencil marks in it. And then you can also bring you can do a little bit around the base as well. And I'm just gonna soften that with my finger as well. Okay, it's not a huge noticeable thing, so it's one of those things where you can take it or leave it. Now I'm gonna add a few little highlights with a gel pen. Um, this is just one that I got picked up off of Amazon somewhere along the way. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of highlighter around here just to whiten this up a little bit. Now the great thing with that is that you can press your finger into it and soften those edges. So I because I don't want a stark wet white paint so I'm just going to dab that and you can see that 
it comes off on my finger just to lessen the blow a little bit. And I'm just going to do a little bit up around the stalk area. In there. So you can just put little dots and then just pick it up. I'm going to do a little bit along the edge of the stalk there. And the other good thing is if, because we are working on white, if you happen to go outside the lines, you can just clean up those areas um, with your white pen. <laughs> Hides them a little bit more, doesn't it? I just need to wipe it off. I'm just wiping my fingers and my pants. Okay, and then we can add a little bit, just go really lightly on your leaves because the spines of the leaves should actually be pale. Um, I'm just adding a little bit around there. Okay, and what else do we have on apples? They have little pick sometimes little like little dots all over their um, over their skin sometimes. So we can just pop a few dots. So just do a couple at a time, and I press my finger in them just to soften it. You can have more dots down the bottom. Try not to, um, try not to like, and then straight up so that you don't, cause I'm actually smudging some of them a little bit and they're not complete dots. You can leave them as white dots if you wish. Um, and the other great thing is if you find that they're too stark for you, you can actually go over with your blends again and sort of tone them down. Okay, so that's a little bit more texture in my apple. Making sure I'm in the screen still. Now we're going to, and I'm not gonna die cut this, I'm just gonna leave it on a basic card. You can go ahead and die cut now if you wish and use it in your cards, but I'm gonna put a little bit of grounding on this one. So I'm using my gray granite light and dark and also my light black. So I'm gonna use my, bull, uh, my brush tip for this one. So I'm gonna go for my light gray. Now I'm not, the best at this so I'm still learning and I'm still learning about shade and how far to bring my shadowing out so my shadow uh, my apple will be like from here to about here but depending on which way the light is shining it could extend out further this way so that's where I'm still still learning so we're just going to go really lightly underneath and just bring that out I wish we just had some extra, some just a little bit lighter in our uh, markers, but I will bring in, I didn't use, I didn't use my color lifter before, but we, we might have a crack with the color lifter just to soften the edges a bit as well. Okay, so now I'm using my gray granite dark and I'm going to add a little bit and you can see that I'm just using the side of my blends just so that I don't, um, destroy my nib and then I'll come back with my light and blend them in so you can sort of go backwards and forwards to build up your intensity here just not taking it out as far blend that in okay and then we will start adding a little bit of our dark so I can use my bullet tip for this one and I can go underneath, directly underneath that apple and that'll probably stay in fairly close. And then I will switch to grey granite dark. I'll switch to my bullet tip to do a little bit of blending of the black into the dark grey. Now we'll soften that down and then for a little finale we just come in and just add that in just really gently and I won't blend I won't blend that bit there that sort of bases him a little bit so let's try this color lifter and we'll see if we can soften that edge there because we don't we don't have a real light gray Okay, there we go. Well, that's not bad. Just probably about a 20 minute coloring. 
for that one. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So I will pull back so you can see. So I've just used, like I said, we're not going to make a card or anything. It's just a pure colouring. And then that is what I've just turned it into. Just a really, really simple um, card. I've used happy birthday. You can use any sentiment you like. It'll probably probably wouldn't be bad for a masculine card either. Um, so you've got options there, haven't you? Because it's a fairly simple, a simple card. I actually quite like how that's faded off a little bit. I might come and fade this one out a little bit more. Um, and I coloured in my rhinestones with my dark red as well, with my red blends so that I could just have a little bit of bling on there. So there we go. I hope you have enjoyed um, colouring. If you do have a, co a go at the colouring the apple, come and find me on any of my socials and, um, and share it with me. I'd love to see. So thanks very much and uh, we'll catch you another time. Bye.